Hey everybody, Bill in Virginia, welcome back. So I'm back over at the workbench at the start of this episode. And uh, what you can see here are my safety rails that I'm building for the uh, caboose that I did a while back. Uh, this, you know, is a nice little 3D printed caboose. But, uh, you know, adding the safety rails just on the ends there and over here are going to really set it off and make it look a lot better. So I've super glued uh, just some thin uh, plastic stock. Just this little, like, uh, I don't know, it's like, what is it, maybe an eighth inch? Yep, eighth inch. Eighth inch uh, square stock. Just eyeballed it to get what I thought, thought was a good height. Painted it uh, again with this uh, Deco Art Mississippi Mud. I really like that because it gives it a warm wood appearance. And then I can come back in and I'm going to use probably a little bit of white just to kind of make it look like a faded white uh, handrail. Uh, I've seen that in some pictures of uh, some rolling stock for uh, narrow gauge logging uh, companies. So I'm going to put that on. Won't take too long, just a little drop of super glue on each of the bottom posts and I will have it in place. I will move my uh, engineer here and get it set up. Next thing you see, I should have this pretty well done. Well, just a little bit later and uh, I'm calling the uh, 3D printed caboose done. Nice kit. Really like that. I got my uh, end railing put in, added a conductor who's leaning over the railing, uh, looks like he's checking out the truck on the car in front of him. So this turned out well. I ended up painting um, over that brown with uh, a white, uh, just dry brush, and then uh, added some dark chalk on top of it just to kind of give it a weathered look. Let's see, there we go. Yeah. Add a little bit more dusting to the deck where they'd come up from. But, uh, yeah, I like that. That one I consider done. And uh, we'll run it on the layout here a little later. Maybe this video, maybe the next one. I'm going to continue to work on... Uh, the work boost next, and then uh, we'll go over to the crane, get things painted and put in place this weekend yet. Well, smokestack is on, so I am ready to uh, paint this. I think what I'm going to do is on the inside of this, I think I'm going to actually paint it black uh, just to really darken it up. Um, and then I will put in the glazing on this, just to kind of make it hide. And then the floor, the uh, floor of the decking, I will uh, I might make that black too, uh, just to kind of keep the light out of it. And then this, I'll use more of that Mississippi mud with a little bit of uh, brown and some other uh, like uh, plaid. I have here uh, honeycomb. So a few other colors just to kind of give it that weathered look. And then uh, this will be ready to go back onto the layout. So, uh, and of course I will glue this on once I get all of the painting done. But uh, next uh, you see on this one, I should be far along on the painting. So later Saturday afternoon, and I have the uh, painting and weathering pretty well done on this car. I like how that looks. It's a nice rustic work boost, as they're calling it. I opted to use a little white paint around the windows. That way it sort of carries over from the white handrails that were on the uh, caboose that I did. So I like how this is looking, a very rustic uh, piece of rolling stock. What I'm working on currently is the crane that's going to go on it. I'm finishing it up. I've got the uh, thread run and I've glued it onto the hook, letting it dry. 
Uh, the position that I'm going to have it on the car is I'm going to have the hook laying mostly on the deck so that uh, if this car is being moved, I wouldn't think that that hook would be free swinging everywhere. It would be laying down. That's how I'm going to model it. So I will paint this uh, mostly a flat black along with some highlights for rust and, you know, dab in a little bit of other color here and there and should have that done and mounted very shortly. So uh, next uh, segment will show this back on the layout on the uh, back of the train. And there we have the little work boost on the uh, train as well. Got my crane in, got it painted up, weathered, rusted. About the only thing I'm going to do yet, and that will be to put in maybe a barrel or two. Um, just kind of have those in there. I've got some that are already pre-painted. I'll just put a little glue on the bottom and set it in. And maybe add a few tools or chunk of chain or some other stuff. But you know, nothing that I have to do right at this minute. So I like that. It turned out pretty well. So these two cars look good. Definitely uh, narrow gauge. Let's turn the attention now to the uh, crane as well as the flat car. That will occupy the rest of this video, I think. Now, one more shot of this. So I found a few things to put on it. A uh, drum that was open with a little debris in it. Then off eBay, I bought a uh, pretty good sized bag of uh, like plaster crates and uh, different things that somebody was selling. The uh, paint job on them really wasn't that good. Uh, you know, so I, uh, as I've been using them, I've been repainting. So that little crate in there is one of those. And uh, that big crate that is in here is also one of them. Uh, so I've been doing some touch up on those. And as I see a need, I can put them on the layout. So this one now is done. That's as much as I'm going to do with that. At least for right now who knows maybe later I'll add something to it but let's start working on the crane well, later Saturday night and back over at the bench so I've got the tracks on the flat car at uh, basically ON 30 you can see I put in uh, four fish plates on each track those were ho scale detail parts that i had on the uh, ho scale layout i got a pack of those with like a hundred of them and i you know scattered them around as details so i uh, grabbed four put them on staggered them because i'm thinking uh, you know in the real life they wouldn't necessarily all be tied to the same plank if there was uh, any problems and then I put uh, a bumper that I had in. I super glued that down just a minute ago. So on my railroad, the uh, crane uh, sits here for transport. It's its home car. And then, you know, it can go to other, other cars. And in the prototype, I really don't know how it goes from one car to another because <laughs> there's a gap, there's got to be a gap that allows uh, the cars to move. Unless, uh, you know, there's a maybe a bolt-on piece that the, the companies use to go in between. I really don't know. If anybody knows, you know, leave a comment when you see this video because I'm kind of curious. The uh, book that I've got on West Virginia uh, logging railroads really doesn't say. It's got some good pictures showing the track on flat cars and on log buggies but not what goes in between. Uh, not that I'm going to model it, but I'm just kind of curious. So this car I'm considering done, uh, except when I get the crane on and I will do some additional weathering and put some debris on it, you know, little detail stuff that'll come later. Ready to turn my attention to the crane and start painting it. A quick look at the car, flat car back over here where it's going to be on display. So that looks decent. All right, time to uh, do some more painting. 
So turning off my work lights over here at my little workstation uh, makes it easier to see when I'm using the video camera. Uh, I got the uh, enclosure for the crane boiler uh, pretty well done. I've got the first coat of paint on it and you can see I've got it weathered already to an extent. I will come back in and put on more rust. Uh, there's lots of little bolt holes or bolt heads sticking out that I'll put a little bit of rust stain on that as well as some grime so we'll weather that up pretty good. The uh, crane arm uh, first basic coat is on. Just uh, I always put down a, a first layer and then I'll come back in and put on an additional coat on top of that. I do that pretty much with everything with the resin kits to give it a nice even appearance and you know, give it a little bit of flesh, as it were, on the, uh, the structures. So I'll come back in on that tomorrow. You can see I wasn't very careful. I've missed some spots, like I said, just first coat. So it's Saturday night, late, and I'm closing up for the day. Uh, tomorrow, I should be able to get this done. Uh, it's not going to take that long. It's more... Uh, additional uh, browns and blacks and uh, some rust and some grays in a few spots and should have it wrapped up. So more coming tomorrow on this. And I think, yeah, by the end of this video, we'll have it sitting back over on top of that flat car. Sunday afternoon, a rainy day here in Richmond, Virginia. I have the uh, weathering and detailing done on the cab. Uh, came back in with a toothpick and every one of the little bolt details you can see I added just a touch of rust and then a light wash of rust on uh, the top for the roof I used that hammered iron for the base coat up there and that turned out pretty well also came back in with a sort of a gray black wash and lightly applied it into different areas of this so uh, I'm satisfied. That looks quite old and quite beat up. Over on the crane, I have uh, finished my painting on it, uh, with the exception of I'm going to use black just to kind of paint the uh, angle piece that's down here. And I will add a wash of black on the grapple on the end. Otherwise, the uh, boom arm itself is done. So I'm going to get that finished, and then I'm going to turn my attention to here. Uh, the piping, I will leave silver. Uh, I will give it a thin wash to uh, dirty it up a little bit. Boiler, uh, basically uh, black, and everything on the inside black, deck brown, some other you know minor coloration changes. And then uh, weathering, and I will have this done. So uh, next one I should have at least the basics done on that part of it here. A little later Sunday afternoon, and uh, I think I'm done painting. I've got this uh, painted up and weathered up. I like how it looks. I'm going to let it dry just a little bit longer here. And then I'll put it together and uh, we'll get it put over on the layout. So, a uh, nice little project. Still raining here in Richmond. And this was fun. Not that hard of a kit to put together. It took a little while, but the results, I'm, I'm quite happy with it. So I'll let the paint all dry well, and then I'm going to put it together and uh, see how it looks. So late Sunday afternoon, and it is done. And back on the layout. Now this was a, a fun little build. The uh, boom swivels quite far, which is great. The uh, inside, you can see, you can see the details in there. I, I have decided that at least at this point, I am not going to glue the enclosure down. Uh, you know, if I ever want to, uh, I wouldn't say admire my work, but I'll say I admire my work. I can take the enclosure off. You know, these uh, pivot points are obviously not glued so that I can see uh, what I've got on the inside of this. But uh, this looks nice. I, this was a really fun model. 
it was one that I was a little bit intimidated with uh, before you know, I actually started. But once I got rolling on it, not bad. Uh, it was fun. So with that, keep having fun on your layouts. Until next time.